Hi Global Entrepreneurs, welcome to BGI's YouTube channel. We've had quite an interesting couple of months interviewing key stakeholders in the Portuguese startup ecosystem. We've interviewed investors to startup founders to policy makers. Our goal is to shine some light on the innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem in Portugal. We hope you enjoy this episode. So yeah, so thank you Marco for joining us. Um, on this edition, quarantine edition of uh, <laughs> Scale Up Portugal interview. Uh, so we were supposed to meet in person, but unfortunately due to the world sort of changed um, in between planning this and getting to talk to you. Okay, so I think um, I'll open the floor to you just to tell us about, um, give us an introduction about FinTech House and how you started, where you are right now, and anything that needs to be known about the FinTech House. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for, for the invite. Um, I'm, I'm Marco, I'm the, the director of, of the Fintech House, uh, a brand new uh, hub for, uh, for startups here in, in Lisbon. Uh, it was uh, created by Portugal Fintech, a nonprofit association that it's been working to, to create awareness and, and to help the Fintech ecosystem for the last uh, five years. Um, we have done different initiatives and, and the last one was, was the FinTech House, uh, a place where the whole FinTech ecosystem uh, here in Portugal and in Europe could meet. Uh, we've, done, we've done a partnership with the uh, Portugal FinTech Association and a co-working uh, uh, operator, the biggest network of co-works here in Portugal that is called uh, CTO and all these uh, with the purpose to give all the conditions for startups to, to grow. We have, uh, with, the, with the Portugal FinTech Association, we have four main pillars of action and uh, basically is connect the startups and the FinTechs with uh, talent and knowledge, with a, with a network of, of universities and, and other kinds of, of talent. Um, then access to capital with a network of uh, investors that, that we have, try to connect those, those points. Then something very, very important for, uh, for fintechs, that is the regulation. We've uh, created the, the FinLab uh, two years ago with, uh, along, alongside with the, the three regulators here in, in Portugal. And it's going, um, it's going right now. So they, they have the second edition. And then the, the fourth one is access to, to mature players. That could be partners, clients, or uh, providers. Uh, the FinTech house has um, five partners, main partners, one bank, one insurance company, one legal firm, uh, a consulting firm, and also, um, and also an enabler that is like the one that gives a lot of, of uh, infrastructure to, to, the, to the startups. And uh, we have big names at the, at the FinTech house. We also have cloud services and, uh, and the infrastructure uh, partners on that side. Uh, we will talk more about yes, definitely, more that. Definitely. And um, it's, it's very interesting because at first glance, people might mistake the FinTech house as just like a co-working space, but it's way more than a co-working space. And I think it's very important to uh, elaborate. And I think we'll talk a little bit more about that um, as we move on in the interview. But obviously, it's so funny why um, FinTech, obviously, there are so many verticals and industries that um, several companies could have come together. And why Portugal, you know? You know, because this easily could have been something else, maybe the MedTech house or the ICT house or something. Why FinTech and why Portugal? Um, well, the, 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 the hub was created by the Portugal FinTech Association um, that it was, it was helping the ecosystem since ever here in Portugal. Um, I think Portugal, it's, it's been growing a lot. And I think I would love to answer this question in a, in a personal way. Uh, I think yes, Portugal, yes. yeah, I think Portugal is a, it's a fast growing ecosystem. Uh, it's a very cosmopolitan, in, in the case of, of Lisbon, a very cosmopolitan city and it has a great quality of life. And not only me, that I'm not, I'm not Portuguese, uh, and I came uh, here. Uh, I think for most of the people that comes here, 
see uh, they see that they see that that is a great city to live in. There's a lot of people uh, from all over the world, and it's a fast-growing uh, ecosystem. So why Portugal? Because of that. <laughs> and and in the in the case of, of fintech, well, uh, banks and insurance companies and financial institutions in in general are everywhere, are very um, like in contact with the, with the with the people all over the world. And I think there is a there is a, a very good uh, opportunity to innovate on those on that sector on that industry, and I think um, having startups that could bring fast innovation to these companies uh, it's 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 a great sector to to be in because we can see real impact of of implementing those solutions in 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 these institutions and deliver that value. To the to the final client, in my case, uh, why fintech? Um, because I have tech background, but I've lived in in Latin America, mm-hmm. and we see that, that innovation there it's it's very necessary, and um, and I don't know I I, I I like to to have a like see a problem and try to get Solve solutions to to cope with that. Okay, great. That's quite interesting. And, and I think um, you mentioned something that I was sort of thinking about, which was going to lead to my next question of how, um, you know, it's very important for corporates, especially because many of them have challenges they want to solve. So having the, fin- the fintech house and the, um, the um, it's, it's very strategic for them in terms of like getting, having access to innovation that could help them to grow. You know, what other ways do you think or why, what other ways do you think is very important for um, big corporates? Because you have really big names um, in the fintech house, like Visa, Accenture, and the likes, you know, um, collaborating with you guys. So it's because why all that beyond them looking for innovation that could help them grow, grow, why do you think it's much more important for big corporates to organizations that like to sort of work with innovation? That, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, we have, we have big, uh, big names there at the fintech house. We have Accenture, uh, Visa, BBVA, um, Fidelidad, and Moray Shaitao. Those are in, in all of those verticals that I mentioned are really great companies that are looking for, for innovation and to give value to, to their clients. And I think the, the key word uh, here is, is collaboration. The world is becoming more and more uh, collaborative and large organizations uh, get really a clear value uh, w- when working with, with, with the startups. Uh, as, as I said, startups uh, bring to the table fast innovation that could be plugged into a, an organization. And, um, and we see more and more use cases with, with, with the time. Um, sure. I, think, I think collaborating gives a, a win-win uh, solution Okay. For, for everyone in the value chain. For yeah. example, I don't know, Accenture, it's, it's a great connector between the, the, the financial institutions and uh, the innovation that is happening. Uh, Visa has a developer fra- platform for, for the startups yeah. to, to integrate faster the, their solutions. BBVA, it's a leader in, in open banking mm-hmm. uh, in the world. Um, and, and they are always looking for, for a startup that yes. can bring innovation to, to the table. Yeah. Well, so, and it's quite, and it's, yeah, we, we, well, it's, it's great to see that these big organizations are working very closely in innovation and, and adapting to the times. But we still have um, very large corporates who are not um, still um, on this trend, as you would say, with working with, with innovations. What do you think, um, needs, what, what kind of incentives do you think needs to be in place to help sort of those organizations, larger organizations to get on board um, working with innovation? What do they need to see? What do they need to know? Um, I think it will be a process uh, where, where organizations will, will uh, realize that, that innovation, uh, it's good and it's not a, a challenge that, uh, that, today and and we're we're seeing that with with the with this coronavirus situation exactly uh, yeah. those who doesn't uh innovate and adapt are risking a lot uh, and these are fast changing uh times and we need 
continuously to integrate new solutions to, to reach the final customer and give value to that final customer. I think that that's the key mindset, um, to, to give value always to, to the startup, uh, to the um, customer. And I think that the best way to, to, I don't know, to support innovation as a whole in the ecosystem is to be a, a consumer. Uh, if you consume innovation, you will clearly see the, the results. So, so tell me, how does somebody get into the FinTech house? How do they join? Um, we receive applications through, through our site or on the different events that we, that we host mm -hmm. right now virtually. Um, so with every way of contacting us, social media, our webpage, contacts, uh, intros with other startups, we receive the applications, we schedule a meeting and uh, we, we talk a bit about the solution that they have and how they can plug into this, this hub, into this uh, community and uh, what um, can they, I mean, what benefit can they take from the, from the community? How can we help? And also what they can bring to the community. Mm -hmm. Because okay. uh, startups, when, when they start working together, it's, it's a win-win situation yeah. and they can both grow, grow a, a lot. So what we do is just a, a meeting and if we see a match, uh, they are they are in. So is there like a concrete evaluation process? Does it work like we have in like for example in BGI's case where we have an acceleration program whereby the startup we evaluate and we select? Is that the same process? So you have a variety of applicants and then you have this evaluation process to select who joins the community. Is that the same way it works too? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. As for example, we with, with the physical space that that we have. Uh, and the community, it's with a vertical. Well, I mean, here in Lisbon, you, you can see a lot of co-working spaces and a lot of uh, entrepreneurial hubs uh, that are more generalist. In, in our case, what we want and what we, we try to, to see if that this solution is a fintech or insurtech or regtech or, mm -hmm. or cybersecurity solution because we want to give that value. I mean, mm -hmm. we have a lot of benefits of, of being part of, of the community and we like to, to give that value to, to the startups. So we just see if, if they are in one of those uh, verticals mm -hmm. and if we can help. Okay. Fantastic. It's a more, it's a more informal process if you, if you, if you want, but we want to have specific startups in our, in our community. It's not for everyone. Okay. okay. So um, um, obviously you're, you're, you're a foreigner to Portugal just like me. And obviously we tend to see uh, the ecosystem from different perspective. Um, so obviously in the last period of years, and I always ask this question to everybody that I interview, just to get everybody's perspective uh, on, on, on the ecosystem. I always ask them, there's a buzz about Portugal. And obviously when I first came to Portugal, I didn't know the buzz about the startup ecosystem and everything that was going on but there is this buzz there so i always ask um, my um, those who i interview is the buzz real or is it fake does it live up to the hype <laughs> or does it not uh, that's a that's a great question um i would say that 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 portugal uh has been growing very very fast in the last few years and uh, there are a lot of things happening here more and more startups coming, companies coming, like worldwide companies uh, coming here. And uh, we know that, that, I mean, Portugal has a great weather, great food, great everything, but also in the entrepreneurial ecosystem, I think it's growing very fast. And uh, there is a space for growing more and more. And I, I feel, I feel in, in a couple of years, it will become a, a a key entrepreneurial hub in Europe. Okay. Uh, I, I think, yeah, that's the final answer. I, I think it's, it's growing fast and it will continue growing. And I'm also, I don't know, I'm optimistic that the, the buzz is because of something. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So how do they find FinTech house? So I'm a, I'm a FinTech founder right now. I'm listening to this podcast. 
uh, I'm watching this interview, how did they find FinTech House? Web page like Google, uh, FinTech House Lisbon, and we will be there, like Portugal FinTech, FinTech House, uh, feel free to to reach out also uh, via LinkedIn our social networks mm -hmm. and um, and we have other channels but but I think I think those two are, are the main ones okay fine and, nice. uh, and just apply there okay awesome so thank you Marco for joining us in this interview it was really nice talking to you hi everyone I hope you really enjoyed that video if you want to know more about Portuguese startup ecosystem as well as the top promising scale-ups in Portugal, uh, make sure you go to our website at www.scaleupportugal.tech and download all our reports that we've written for the ecosystem. So if you just want to find out about what other activities we do regarding the ecosystem, how we accelerate um, startups here in Portugal, also make sure you go to www.bgi.pt and send us an email and we'll get back to you. Thank you.